Hi, I'm Cressel Anderson, this is Maker Size. In this episode, I finished the Gingri lathe by completing the permanent spindles. The spindles go in the headstock. Previously, I've been using some temporary spindles to allow me to turn between centers and turn on an arbor. These permanent spindles should give me an easier way to change out different tooling. Before I got started turning the permanent spindles, I decided to clean up the centers on the temporary spindles. I took off the faceplate and got the compound adjusted to turn that 60 degree point. At first I just kind of eyeball the alignment of the compound. I check it later with a gauge, but uh, initially just run it back and forth checking it by eye. I have put a little mark on the at the base of the compound so that I can more quickly get it into 60 degrees from now on. I glued some 220 and 400 grit sandpaper to some bars that I had in the scrap bin using some spray adhesive. I use them to smooth down the centers to create a nice smooth surface finish. I just wrapped another bar in some thousand grit sandpaper. After dressing the first temporary spindle, I swapped it out and did the same with the second temporary spindle. I cut a little wider slot in the bearings and that should allow me to clamp up a little tighter on these temporary spindles. The bearings do seem to show a little signs of wear, so I try to keep them oiled and that seems to take out some of the slop too. I had to install a temporary center in the tailstock. I'd ordered a number one Morris Taper dead center, but it hadn't come in yet. It, it showed up a day or two after I got started. The last thing I did before starting to turn the permanent spindles is I cleaned up the faceplate. Some folks had noted in the comments that it looked like it was out of balance and that that might be causing some vibrations. So I went ahead and took care of that. I'm gonna check to see if this helped any with balancing. Uh, so I moved it up to a pretty high speed. Oh, very nice. Pushing my luck. Okay. I started out by cutting two lengths of one inch cold rolled steel, and then I drilled them with a center drill on either end, mounted them between centers, and turned them down to diameter. some pretty rough cuts and I think it's because of some slop over here in the headstock so I'm going to show you what that looks like and then I'm going to try to fix it by shimming or removing shims from the headstock maybe adding shims who knows I mean, it like completely changes the depth of cut probably Ten thousands? It's crazy. Why am I doing that? So on the bearing in the headstock, I'm getting whatever that is, a couple thousands. I switch that over to the actual headstock. I'm getting one thousandth. If I switch it over to the Faceplate, more like about five or six. I think I can shim the bearings and get that a little bit tighter. So five thousand shims is not ideal, but 
I really want to be able to get that slot out of there. Both the inside and the outside bearings seem to have the same amount of play. I don't know if that's because they're worn or if that's just normal tolerance, but the split should allow me to tighten up this bearing onto this shaft. After installing those shims, got about a thousandths still on the headstock. Let's see, does it turn? No, it doesn't. Bearing. A couple thou. Face plate. Much better, a couple thou. All right, let's see if that improves turning. I've been chasing this poor cut quality and wouldn't you know it, I mean, who would expect that to have a good surface cut quality? The split nut has started skipping, so I think it's just kind of wearing so as to not postpone completion of this project. Instead of fixing the split nut, I am going to use a little rod to help maintain pressure on it. It's just slipping and if you kind of hold it with hold it tight against the lead screw, the carriage will move just fine. Back in business. I need to adjust the tail stock over uh, so that this thing is parallel and these screws really aren't cutting it. They stick too far back into the tail stock so I'm going to make some little spacer blocks to help those screws kind of stay where I want them. Up until this point, I'd been using brazed carbide tools. They work okay, but I decided to try my hand at some high-speed steel. I thought it might help with some of the chattering I was experiencing. So I hand ground it, and I really like the performance. I sorted out, there was loose screws, places I've got the little lock thing on the split nut engagement lever, and I really like that high speed steel. The initial results with high speed steel were great. The parting tool, however, generated a ton of chatter. And during turning of this permanent spindle, I tried to use this parting tool to make nice square corners in this Part. Uh, but afterwards, I noticed that the surface finish was just really pretty bad. Uh, I was chattering quite a bit. And I tried to track down where that was coming from. I thought something might be loose. Uh, I used some different bits that were freshly sharpened, different turning tools. Um, and I finally found what I think is the source of the problem. This taper on the centers is pretty gnarly. This was actually the one on the tailstock end. This is the one on the headstock end. I've got it flipped around because I need to freshen this back up to see if that fixes the chattering problem that I was experiencing. I got the first spindle pretty much roughed in. After I got it to the rough dimensions, I changed it out for the other spindle, and then I got that one to rough dimensions as well. The main body of the spindle is 5 eighths of an inch. There is a 3 quarter inch diameter section that rides in the right side headstock bearing, and then there is a shoulder that's as close to one inch as I could get it. I did have to uh, take off a little bit just to true up that shaft. And then there is a section that extends out to the right of the headstock. And that is 5 8 inch in the case where I mount the faceplate. This video is part of a series where I build a Gangri lathe and you can check in the cards or down in the description for a link to the full playlist.
based on the chatter that I was getting on the parting tool on the first spindle, I just worked my way down to diameter on this spindle. It means that I have to change out from a left hand to a right hand turning tool, but it's not too bad and I really like using the high speed steel. After I turned down this part for the bearing, it's not turned to the final dimension, but it's turned pretty close. I am going to go ahead and get this section closer to 5 eighths and this section closer to 5 eighths. That should be the finished dimension for those parts. If I get too aggressive with the depth, the belts end up slipping. All right, so this thing is like pretty much spot on five eighths. For early access to project videos, go to makersize.com slash sign up. A while back, somebody suggested putting in pins to keep the bearings from spinning inside the bearing caps. I used an awl to kind of dimple the side of the bearing cap, and then I drilled into the bearings. Then I ground down some nails so they would fit down into those holes, and used a hacksaw to mark it and cut it. I drilled out an oil reservoir channel with an eighth inch bit, and then I enlarged it at the top to a quarter inch. That'll facilitate oil feeding the bearings from the inside. After my initial assembly, I noticed that the shoulder that I have on the spindle was a little wider than the bearing. So it was back over to the lathe to trim off a small amount. With the length of the shoulder correct, I disassembled the headstock, reassembled it with the permanent spindle in it, and added some oil, and then tightened up the bearing cap screws until it just starts to slip, and then I back it off a hair. Added in a little bit more oil because uh, I guess capillary action draws that oil down into the bearing, and then I used some cotton to keep junk from getting in the top. I made these spindles a little bit long, so there are some at the end that needs to be faced off. And then on this particular spindle, I tapered down the end to form the point of a center. So now I can turn on centers with this permanent spindle. The faceplate was a little tight on this spindle, so I tried some sandpaper initially, but ended up turning off just a hair, and then some more sandpaper until I got a good fit.
this is essentially complete. The only thing that I have left to do is I'm going to make a permanent spindle with a Morse taper on it. So I need to go ahead and finish turning it, but I'm going to be using this tapered spindle along with the faceplate, which now fits this spindle to drive this work. In part 13 of the series, Paul Arbor suggested that I check the vertical alignment of the tailstock to ensure that it was lined up with the headstock. And it turns out it wasn't. It was a little bit low. And this is probably due to the zip ties that I used during the boring of the tailstock. But at any rate, I used uh, some feeler gauges to determine what thickness of shim I needed to use for shimming the tailstock and then I was able to get that lined up pretty well. Currently I've got an extra spindle that's three quarters of an inch. In the book, Gingri talks about cutting a Morris taper in it, but I can't really think of what I'd like to do with a Morris taper in the spindle. If you have any ideas, definitely put them in the comments. Really what I think I need is a faceplate that is cast onto a spindle, so there might be another one in the future. The lathe is complete per the book. However, there are some accessories I think that would make it more functional and I'll probably focus on those. However, I am going to move on to the shaper. That is a Patreon reward. I think I'm a little over halfway uh, to that goal. And then based on meeting that target, I'm gonna start the shaper. So that should give me enough time to do a little bit of improvements to the lathe, as well as complete some other projects. But if you're enjoying the Gingri lathe series, consider supporting me on Patreon. I think the Shaper will be a really cool project, and I'd really even like to continue on down the Gingri machine tool series. I hope this video inspires you to exercise your inner maker. If you enjoy the video, click the like button, share it, leave a comment. Thanks for watching.